In this um, video, I'm going to go over the cam setups for this side tube here. The first step um, would be to start measuring the part and understanding um, the, the different features. We can hit M for measure. You can select this is a two inch by one inch tube um, that has a wall thickness of one eighth of an inch. Other features that I typically look at is like the radius of a fillet. Um, you can see that this has a radius of 0.15. Might look at the radius here um, of this little semicircle as 0.175. Other things that I would probably look at are these holes of 1.125. The reason why I'm looking at that is that helps me determine the size of an end mill that I'm going to need. Um, also, when I see the 1.125, I, I know that a bearing is going to most likely be going into that hole, and that helps um, me set up um, the additional um, requirements for um, bearing holes. So once I have that, um, then under the CAM tab, we need to create a setup. I'm going to let this be my first setup this be my second and so forth. And so I'm gonna hit setup. The back left corner is going to be the origin. So you can choose, choose stock box point. I often do selected point and then choose that back left corner for the origin of the work coordinate system. I want the Z axis to be vertically upward so I can click um, Z axis here and just click this plane to ensure that the Z axis is vertically upward. If it's going down, I could flip it. Um, the x-axis needs to go um, to the right here. Right now I have the x-axis here, so I'm going to go x-axis and just select along that line. And that's what I want. Again, if the x-axis is the wrong direction, I could always flip it. The next is the stock. Often what I do um, is just do a relative size box with no offset. And um, by default, yours might have like a, a 40 thousandths. Um, if you want to change the default to zero, all you have to do is hit zero and then right click and then you can go save as user default and then all future times it won't add any material. Once you have um, your stock set up, um, we can start going into the different operations within that given setup. One thing I want to point you, um, some people and sometimes choose like a fixed size box instead of a relative size box and then add a little bit of extra material maybe a half of an inch to the x and then you choose the offset from left side and just set a zero offset and what that does is shows the extra length of material um, that would be cut off um, as you would see when we would actually machine it and that's because um, we cut the stock a little bit long Again, it really doesn't matter for our um, cam. It just helps us maybe visualize things a little bit better. So um, again, you can choose the relative or fixed size box. Once you're done there, hit OK. I call the first setup, setup one. Um, the reason my mine wasn't setup one is I've used this part for uh, other tutorials and things, and I had already done cam on it. So once I'm done there um, and I understand um, you know, the different sizes of things that need to be done. First thing I'm going to do is maybe take these two big um, parts out with the quarter inch end mill. And what I'm going to do is an adaptive clearing to clear out the material and then a contour to clean those up. Then I think I will um, jump to these um, three holes. Um, since they're bearing holes, the contour is going to be a little bit different. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, then I'm going to do an end cut with that quarter inch end mill. Then I'm going to jump to a smaller end mill um, to do these. I'll probably do a 3 16 end mill. Um, and the reason why I'm going to jump to a smaller one, even though a quarter inch end mill can fit in those holes, is the helical entry. Um, I can have a little bit of a larger diameter of helix as I enter it. And you'll see that as I go through this. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is under 2D milling, I'm going to choose um, 2D adaptive clearing. 
And often um, the first thing that I do is just choose the tool. Um, it doesn't matter which Haas machine. If you want to do the smaller Haas one, it would be the TM1P. The larger Haas one would be the VF3. I'll just do it on the smaller one since there's um, fewer tools that I have to sort through to find. I'm just going to use the quarter inch flat end mill to do this. I'm going to go select. And then um, the next thing I want to do is select the geometry. Once a pocket, um, you can. I typically select the bottom edge here. You can select the top edge. We'll talk about um, the difference it really is in the depths when you um, do the depth of cut. So I'm going to select those two. Um, on the depths, by default, it will go to the selected contours. I want to go a little bit deeper, usually um, 25 to 50 thousandths of an inch deeper is what I typically do. A couple of other things. I don't want to leave any stock in the Z, which is the axial. So I'm going to do um, no stock to leave. Usually 10 to 20 thousandths is what I leave in the radial. Um, I often choose the smoothing. Um, we'll talk more about that in class, but I, I, I often try to do that. And um, in this case, there's I don't think I'm going to need to do anything in the, the default lead in, and we'll, we'll see that. So um, once I hit OK, kind of see that the end mill will go down, do this helical um, entry, go down, clear that material, and then exit here. OK, once I've done that, um, you know what? I, I left 10 thousandths of an inch along the perimeter. And so what I want to do is go right click and go create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. And then basically, um, I don't need to do anything. I can just hit OK. But let me just show you what that does. It keeps the same tool. It keeps the same geometry. It keeps the same depth, but it just does a contour. Um, and it doesn't leave any material. And so I can hit OK. And that is done. Now, um, once I've done that, I'm going to do basically the same thing for the bearing holes, except I'm going to take off a little bit of extra material and do a spring pass to um, get the best finish for a bearing that I can. So to do that, I'm going to do um, 2D Adaptive again. Select the bottom edges here, here, and here. And then once I've done that, um, notice it just keeps the same tool. So I kind of skipped over that. So now on the depths, I want to go just a little bit deeper. So I want to go in the negative. I'm, I'm going to go 50 thousandths of an inch. I don't want to leave any um, thin, thin foil edge. Um, if I if the tube is a, a slightly thicker than um, an eighth of an inch, and so that's why I do that. It saves a lot of um, time on post processing and deburring and things like that. The passes here, um, the stock to leave. I do not want to leave any um, axial stock. Again, if you can right here, if you right click and go save as user default it will always just leave it as zero in the future. 10 to 20 thousandths is fine, smoothing. Um, and I should not need to change anything with the lead in and the, the helical lead in here. And so with that, you can kind of see it's really doing on the adaptive clearing, right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, um, 2D contour. Once I have that, Basically, I'm going to use tool two, same geometry, same depth. Um, I basically am now in this step, I'm going to do two different things. I'm going to do stock to leave. And in the radial, I actually want to make the hole slightly bigger. And we found if you go around um, six ten thousandths of an inch in the radius, that makes the hole diameter about 1.2 thousandths of an inch larger in diameter. And we found that that's a pretty nice fit for our bearings. Um, and then I do repeat finishing passes. And what that does is it creates what's called a spring pass. And if you just hover over this, it describes what it is. Um, but in short, it will contour around that hole twice. 
in the same um, it will um, it will take off this it will take off the material in the first pass follow the exact same path in the second path and that um, hopefully clears out material that might be left due to any tool deflection and so we call that a spring pass um, and we can just hit OK there and now we're done with the bearing holes next thing I want to do is the end cut I typically do an end cut with a quarter inch end mill and since I already have the quarter inch end mill loaded in the machine to save time it makes sense to do that now and so on the um, on the, that end cut you're going to go um, not a 2d adaptive clearing we're going to do a 2d contour then um, you can select this edge here. The, I hesitate to do that because it doesn't do the full length. So I often just select this edge here and you hit, click Alt, left click. If you don't hit the Alt button, it will go all the way around the perimeter. I don't want to do that. I just want to click the end. So a few things we want to do. The first thing is a good rule of thumb is to half the feed rate. Okay, we're doing a slot cut full. Um, full depth into this material and you can snap the end mill if you go too fast and a good rule of thumb is take the default cutting feed rate and cut it at least in half okay um so you know we could divide um 30 or 75 and in, in half and what do we get 37 and a half really doesn't matter you could just do 35 or somewhere um either half the speed or less so 37 and a half 35 um, inches per minute is um, will, will be fine for us. Um, the next thing we already have the contour, the depth. Here we want to go basically through this eighth inch material plus a little bit. So we can go um, since I selected the top, I'm going to need to go at least negative 1.25 plus another maybe 25 or 50 thousand. So I'll just go negative 0.15 inches. Okay, and that ensures that I've cut um, full depth. The next thing that I want to look at is um, under your linking parameters, you can choose smoothing. Again, we'll talk more about smoothing um, here. If you don't select it, it'll still work. Um, but the linking parameters are really what I want to do. And to show you what the reason why these need to be changed i'm just going to hit okay and not change anything from the default we'll look at what this is doing and see the problem so um, if we have a view like this and we hit um, simulate you can see that since the stock material is longer it's not showing the stock material longer um, but in short the tool is diving vertically into material right here and we do not want to dive into any material so um, we have to avoid that you never want to dive vertically into material with um, an end mill like this and so we're going to hit close we're going to double click on this go to the last tab and basically um, i'm going to get rid of the the 90 degree sweep and angle and just go zero there and then change the linear lead in distance to a value greater than the radius of the end mill. So the radius of the end mill is 0.125 because it's a quarter inch diameter. And so maybe like 0.15 will be fine. Once I do that and hit OK, let's take a look at what happens. First, it gets rid of that little um, 90 degree um, lead in before it just is going to go straight in but also it's not going to be diving into any material you can see the linear lead in distance which is this is greater than the radius of the end mill so now we're diving into air and then we cut through the material again we have that extra little depth that is a critical thing um, that you need to do again the steps for end cuts slow down the default feed rate to about half its default speed and then change the under the um, linking tab change the lead in to zero degree sweep angle and increase the linear lead in distance 
to something greater than the radius of the end mill. So now that we have that, um, the last part that we need to do is do some work here. Again, I'm going to jump to a smaller end mill. I'll jump to a 3 16 end mill and do all of these in one. So the next thing, I'm going to go 2D Adaptive. I'm going to choose a new tool that's a smaller diameter. Let's choose the 3 16 flat end mill. Select all these bottom edges here. And then um, go to the depths. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Again, 25 to 50 thousandths is sufficient, usually sufficient. Leave um, 10 to 20 thousandths of um, radial stock to leave. And then choose smoothing. And we should not, hopefully we don't have to change any helix. We'll, we'll see um, if we do need to change the um, helic, helical um, diameter. What, what the default is is here. And basically, if that um, is too large that for the tool to fit in there, then the tool, it will just skip that operation. So we need to be really um, careful to look and see if everything looks good. I see a problem here. I'm actually not sure what the problem is. Um, I've never seen that before. Interesting. Let me double click. I may have chosen. That's weird. Okay. So let's try this again. Um, 3 16th end mill. Oh. Hmm. It has a lot. Um, let me deselect all this and then um, just select this. I'm not sure what happened there. All that I want are the holes, the, the clearance holes and the clearance slots is really what I want. And so let's hit OK here and see if it fixed that. OK, it did. Um, but notice it's really only going into a single hole, um, which is interesting why it's only going into one. And so my um, first guess is the helical ramp diameter is a little bit too large. So I'm just going to go maybe um, 0.125, and we'll see what happens there. And now um, it does um, clear out all of those sections. Basically, if the diameter is too large, it won't. Um, it'll just skip over that. It'll say the hole's too small for the tool diameter and the helical ramp diameter, and it, it won't give you. Um, the correct diameter to choose it will just skip over that one thing to be aware of um, i prefer the largest diameter possible and so you could take a moment to see if you could go to something a little bit larger um, it just helps um, the machine run a little bit more smoothly um, but again if you can't get it with a larger diameter that's fine so like 0.15 does not work so we'll go back to 0.125 on your um, helical ramp diameter. OK, um, so now that we've cleaned that out, the last thing we need to do is just contour clean that up. Um, so we're going to go right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour. And we just should be able to hit OK. There, uh, It keeps the same tool, the same geometry, the same depth, everything. So if we hit OK. There we go. So once that's done, we can um, just simulate everything if you'd like. You can show the stock material. Um, for time, I'm not going to just go through all of that, but it's always a good check to do um, a visual check of the simulation. To turn in your work, what you would do is you would um, control select all of these sections here. You could probably shift select that and then you would get a snip of that you know windows shift s gives you the snip and then you could turn that snip in um, for your first operation or i should say for your first setup now um, for time 
what I often do is um, just make a copy of this. I right click and go, um, let's see, it should say duplicate. And my second operation is going to be up here. Now, I know that I'm not going to do any adaptive clearing, um, but I am going to do that end cut. Um, and so I'm going to keep this, um, that, that end cut that I had before. So I'm going to delete all this work. There's no um, adaptive clearing here. These are all holes that need to be drilled on this side. But um, I can quickly just go to setup and choose a new um, location. So I can just delete the old location and choose a new one here. Choose my z-axis to be perpendicular to this plane. And that is done. I'm going to rename this to setup number two. And then the first thing I'm going to do is just change um, the end cap. The nice thing here is I can just go to geometry, cl um, clear out that old geometry, and then Alt left click here. Everything is set. The tool, the speeds, the lead ins, done. So I don't need to redo all of that work. Um, then the next thing that I do is um, I'm just going to go drill. Um, the tool that I'm going to use is the um, 0.196. I didn't measure it, but I know um, I designed it, so I know it's the 0.196 number nine drill bit right here, um, or tool number nine, um, which just happens to be um, a number nine drill bit that has a diameter of 0.196, our standard hole size. Um, notice the tool's orientation is all weird. Um, I, it appears that my setup didn't save properly. So I'm going to actually go back and go to cancel. Oh, um, I think what was happening is it was trying to do the, the operation here. One thing that you can do is see this check mark. If I right click and just go to default folder, now any of the operations will be in here. Um, so when I select an operation, it will be in this setup not in setup one. So now I'm um, go to drill, select the holes. I do have to reselect the tool again, which was the um, 3 sixteenths end mill. I'm sorry, the 0.196 drill bit. Um, a few features under geometry. You can go select holes at the same diameter. I don't want the holes on the bottom, so only um, holes that share the same top Z height. So there's that. Um, then on my heights, I want to basically go through right now. It will just, you can see the drill bit just goes down here. It's leaving all this material. So I definitely make sure I click drill through the bottom. And then I do add a breakthrough. Again, 25 to 50 thousandths. There's only air down here, making sure that I've cleared out those holes fully. Because if you don't clear them out fully, it's a lot of manual work um, by hand drilling them, and, and it's not as clean. So um, just make sure that you go deep enough here. Now that operation is done. And so now we can move on to um, the third operation. What I often do is I will just go up to this one. Um, the reason why I'm choosing the first one to copy instead of the most recent one is because it has the bearing holes. And so I'm just going to go right click and duplicate. I'm going to move it down to the bottom though. So it's, or I guess maybe I have to move this one up. Now I have this. The first thing I'm going to do is call it, rename it to setup three. So I'm not confused here. That is going to be on this face right here where that is the origin. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear out the old work coordinate system, choose a new one here, choose the Z axis to be perpendicular to this plane. Everything looks good there. Hit OK. can right click and go um, make that the default folder. I don't have the first two adaptives. That was the um, rectangular holes on the first side. But I do have the adaptives for the bearing holes. So I'm going to go right, double click this, clear out the old geometry, and then just select these. 
hit OK. Then um, I do need to do the geometry for the um, contours, which are here. I know that there's an end cut, so I'm going to double click on this, um, clear out the old contour, Alt click, left click here. And that's now done. There are no adaptives here for a smaller end mill. There is some drilling. Couple things we can just um, do the drilling, but you could actually just click here, Control C for copy, and then go here, Control V for paste, because it's really the same drill bit, same depths and all of that. It's just different geometry. So I can double click here, clear out the old geometry, select the new geometry, and I'm done. Okay, you can just double check that everything is good. I know I'm going through this fairly quickly, but you do want to verify that everything looks um, appropriate. Because if, if something looks weird, um, that is what's going to happen at the machine. Now, the final thing, um, and you can see that operation or the setup number four, which is this setup, is really the same as setup number two. So there's really no need to um, do anything different. There's a couple of options. One, I could just right click and duplicate this and call it um, setup number four. So that's one option. And really, I know um, my work coordinate system's on the top here, but it would be no different than if I had my work coordinate system here. It's just symmetrical. Um, another option is instead of making a copy, you would go here and you just say setup two and four, and that would um, be sufficient as well because it's really the same exact um, G code. That is the um, all of the the cam steps for um, the four sides here.